Dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's liturgy we get inspiration from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 35 to 48. It's about the apparition of the Lord to the disciples. The disciples is a follower of Christ. So he appears to you and me, follower of Christ, as he did in the past. He's appearing to you and me today in your situation, in my situation, and he will appear to you and me in the future, even at the end of time. He's appearing to his own. Our Lord revealed himself to us, God with us, and he is with us and remains with us and he said behold i am with you always until the end of time that's the promise of god and when he speaks he speaks now in the past days he first appeared to the women and one of the women was mary magdalene with her own story the lord appeared to her and made her a testimony witness to the resurrection of the good news in spite of her story she becomes a witness to the good news of the lord jesus christ and then we saw yesterday that he appeared the lord to the two disciples who are on their way to emmaus to Cleopas and the other disciple who could be you and me that these disciples we are running away from where life started from from where the resurrection and new life started from from where everything is they were running away from where everything is Jerusalem where the resurrection had taken place they were running away from everywhere everything is going to where nothing is to the, going to there where they're empty where they are they are in crisis they were running away from the community and pretending to live life alone as individuals on the journey life becomes heavy when we walk alone they were running away from the new life to, to death go and forgetting that Jesus has won over death he has, death has no power, nothing has power over the Lord. So they were running away from life to no life. Probably in our life also, we are running away from life and we are disappointed. We are running away from each other and we are disappointed. We are running away from God and we are disappointed. And we walk like a walking dead instead of moving like alive with the Lord who continues working through you and me. The Lord keeps trusting you and me and knows that we can make it. We can be life for others. We can uplift others. And, just, and we can console others. We can encourage others. This is what he himself did when he was on the way to Emmaus and met these disciples and appear to them, listening to them, accompanying them. He's a companion of, our, of their journey. He's a companion of our journey. Our Lord moves us even when we feel like He's not there. Even in those most difficult situations, the Lord is moving with us as He did with the disciples of Emmaus who were downcast, who were desperate, who were confused. He's there to put order in our confusion and to listen to us. He's there to listen to us. He knows everything, yet He, 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 he kind of like pretends to not to know, just so that people can pour around out everything that's part of the healing how the disciples were narrating we too are invited to journey with each other to be companions with each other to listen to each other and their hearts were burning we too are invited to see that our words make the hearts of others burn with joy with love our words should not make others burn with hatred and the heart and they feel like their whole life is finished no our words as christians our actions as christians should make others feel like our hearts are burning out of love out of hope out of joy we are so happy that we feel like it's burning and we want to feel we feel like when it's burning something is burning we want to share it with others that should be that good news in us burning should be the one to be shared with others and this is what even the disciples run away to share immediately because their hearts were burning and then as we are going jesus is kind of like pretending to move away and then they invite him again for supper and that moment of togetherness of eating together at immense supper and yes, for the bread, and they they are able, they recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread. They recognize the Lord. My brother, my sister, we recognize each other when we come together to eat together, to share together, to listen to each other together at the table, at the mensa, when we are eating together, when we are staying together, we recognize each other. We recognize ourselves, we recognize each other, and especially we recognize the Lord working in others and present in others and working in all situations. We recognize each other and we recognize each other as a strength for to go on with life. It's not about eating only for the sake of eating in the table. It's about talking together, sharing together, listening to each 
other, encouraging each other, strengthening each other. Just as the food strengthens us physically, that same food is in, invited, is, is called to also strengthen us phys- spiritually, morally, intellectually. In many aspects at table, we are strengthened in many ways. That's where they recognize the Lord at table. Remember in that gesture of the Last Supper, when the Lord gave his own body and his own blood to them as life, inviting them to give their own selves, to sacrifice ourselves for others so that others can live because of me, because of us. My brother, my sister, the life we have is a life to be offered for the good of others. And when we offer it for the good of others, we offer it also for the good of our own selves, be it in this uh, world, but also in the world to come. So Jesus appeared to these two disciples, and today he appears, when the disciples come, the two disciples come back to Jerusalem, now they are finding their way back. They find the other disciples and they begin narrating with passion because their heart was burning. They begin narrating how the Lord was speaking to them and how they recognized him at the breaking of the bread. And the Lord, at that moment, when the two disciples of Emmaus were narrating to the rest of the disciples, who also the Lord had appeared to them, then the Lord again comes in their midst. From nowhere, he comes in their fears. They were still, and he comes in their fears, their disappointments, because the Lord always has always taken the initiative to be close to us and wants to show to the disciples, to you and me, that he is with us, that we are not alone, that he is there, he has power, and we have power with him too, to continue doing the good work which he started in us. And so he appears in them, and the first words he says, peace be with you. My brother, my sister, these are the same words that he gives them, peace, peace, so that they can give peace to others. My brother, my sister, are you a person of peace? Are you an instrument of peace? Are you a channel through which people are happy with you? They are just It's nice to be with you, my brother, my sister, where you are at home, in the family, in the community. Is You're a peaceful person. Are you a peaceful person? Am I a peace, pass, peaceful person? Am I harmonious? A peaceful person is one who is in harmony, in togetherness, is whole, is complete, is together, is at peace and can confront any situation, good or not good. When we're at peace, we can go through any situation, 100% it together and things will work out for our good but when we are at war meaning are you at war what are my words do my words heal or not my actions are they actions of war of tension my words wound others they keep speaking bad against others they keep gossiping about others they keep being negative my actions my attitude my my words do they hurt others do they kill others the words the actions or they give life or their peaceful lives though they are their words that he uplift others and so he speaks peace be with you but the, you know the disciples are a bit still fearful there and then the lord says okay now i would like to tell you one thing and he continues the lord he shows them their hands the wounds the legs look it's me it's me the resurrected lord but with the wounds my brother my sister we look at ourselves and we have gone through a lot in our lives there may be many people who have wounded us or we have wounded others there are many situations which have hurt us or we have hurt others we are invited to look back at the wounds in us each one of us has wounds some small some big we are invited to pray for the courage to look back at our wounds in order to experience healing a person who experiences healing even psychology says is one who has the courage to face to call everything by name what are your wounds what is it that has wounded you? Of course, it's in the past. And we don't need to go back in the past and that past spoils the present. No. If we go to the past, it's because we want to make peace with the past. We want to reconcile with the past. You cannot make peace if you do not dialogue with the situation, with the people, with the people that hurt you, with the situation that hurt you. And so that's why we see that Jesus showed them the wounds, telling us that we should not be afraid to show our wounds, first of all, to God. It's not about going parading our wounds everywhere to everyone. No, that's not, not what I'm saying. But it's about, first of all, presenting our wounds to Jesus, telling him, Lord, you know my heart, you know how I'm wounded, I'm broken. To present our brokenness to the Lord so that he can make put back the pieces. But never to look back and remain there. No, to present to them to the Lord and also to present them to others, to present our wounds to others, especially those we trust at home, like husband to wife, wife to husband, to never to be afraid to share the wounds with each other. This is how we encourage each other. Whether the other one is going to do something or not, what's important is that I am given a chance to pour out the wounds, to share the wounds, to show my wounds. Never be afraid to share your wounds because that's a way 
towards healing. And so he shows the wounds and then he invites them that he empowers them again to go and preach conversion, to change of heart, change of attitude from bad to good. He talks about the mission to spread the good news, the mission of conversion, the mission of change of attitude, the mission of change from negativity to goodness. And as he expresses this, he tells them that you are witnesses, you are testimonies, meaning never forget the good things that God has done to your lives, however small or big they are. Share them to others. Be an encourager. You'll share the gifts that you have given that God has given you, however small or big they are. He says, You are witnesses, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses. We are witnesses, my brother, my sister. By the fact that we receive the good news, we are all witnesses. And we are invited to always with our lives and actions and words to share the good things that God has done to us. Not the bad things, the good things. And in order to do that, we are invited to be witnesses and to be peacemakers. In order to be at peace, the Lord invites us to for conversion. In order to be converted, we need to confess. Never get tired of confessing, of speaking to God, asking for His mercy, of thanking God for the many blessings, but also asking for mercy, forgiveness, and pardon for our mistakes, because that's what brings us inner peace. So when I was saying that we never be afraid to share your wounds, one best way is to share these wounds with God, to share these wounds with the priest, to share these wounds with the spiritual director, to share these wounds with your couple, married couples, to share these wounds with your friends. Share these wounds wounds always. Of course, when you share with the priest, there's more healing, physical healing and spiritual healing, tall healing. This is what we are to. But never keep these wounds for long. Share them immediately. Share these wounds immediately. Never keep them for long because they will hurt you. And once you have shared them with the priest, with a friend, just let them be. Don't allow them to affect your present because the past is past and is gone. But with the Lord, he has worked out everything, even in these wounds, for our own good. May the Lord continue healing you in whatever you have been through and whatever you are going through. May you experience his closeness as he was with the disciples of Emmaus. May he also be with you in every moment of your life. And you are not alone. The Lord is with us because he promised that I'm with you always until the end of time. God bless you, dear friends, from Jerusalem as the Lord grants you complete healing of your body, mind, heart, and soul. And as you share your wounds, as you pour out everything that is in, in order to be completely healed and never looking at the past in a way that hurts you, but looking at the past as a way that brings healing today, forgiving the past, healing the past, reconciling with the past in order to live my present time today, knowing that whatever happened, happened for the reason known to God. And may the Lord bless you, give you courage to find complete healing and live in the present. Amen. Friends, remember that you may be wounded just, men of, just like many of us are wounded and just like the way the Lord was wounded, but we are all wounded in order to heal. May those experiences help us to heal ourselves. And one way is to keep in mind that we are invited to always pour out everything that is blocking us, that has wounded us, to have the courage to pour it out so that we can be fully healed. It's only when we pour out everything that we are healed completely, especially pouring out to God and to others who are very confidentially able to help us. But what's important is that we pour out. We don't keep anything in us. I don't pretend to say, I will solve it myself. No, 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 no. I have to find someone, spiritual guide, a priest, to help me, guide me, a trusted friend to guide me into every situation. That's when the wounds are healed. Because if I say I will solve it myself, then my, in that case, they be these wounds can keep accumulating and it can create like a bomb inside me that is waiting to explode and the first victims of this explosion will be the people who love me most my wife my husband my children maybe my friends and everyone who loves me who are innocent will be the victims of my woundedness let's help 
heal our own wounds as soon as possible and immediately before the small wounds become big wounds. Courage, my brother, my sister. The Lord had the proud, the pride to show his wounds to the disciples. He has to be proud of the wounds because he learned from that, those wounds because those wounds brought healing. By his wounds, we are healed. By the wounds of Jesus, we are healed. May others also be healed by your own wounds, by your own suffering, by your own pain. May the others be healed by our pains, our wounds. Blessings once again. Blessings, blessings from Jerusalem. Dear friends, and courage. You are not alone. The Lord is helping us out in every situation. And there's nothing that we are work doing that he's not aware of. Because he's ever present, even in those painful, challenging moments of our lives. He's there holding us as a father, watching over us. And everything will work out for the good of those who love the Lord. If we keep trusting and entrusting everything in God's hands. Blessings, blessings, dear friends.